I've been working from home for the last several years, and because of that, I've taken an interest in the air quality in and around my home. With being in the same room for extended periods of time, the amount of CO2 can build up, which can lead to reduced cognitive performance and headaches. Indoor air quality can be negatively impacted by local manufacturing plants, wildfires, poor home ventilation, and even your house being sealed too well. So it's important to have a good understanding of the quality of the air you're breathing in your home. Luckily, there have been multiple companies over the last several years that have made consumer air quality monitors, allowing for some insight into how things are inside our homes. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at two air quality sensors from Air Gradient that can be natively added into Home Assistant for local data sharing of what the sensor sees. Air Gradient sensors can also be added into Homey Pro with an official app that can be installed on your hub. Take note that while Air Gradient did send me two sensors to take a look at, the thoughts and opinion in this video are my own, without any outside influence, monetary or otherwise. Air Gradient currently sells two different air quality monitors, one for the indoors and one for outside. Both models come in either a fully assembled and tested option, or as a DIY kit that you can put together yourself to save some money. Keep in mind that the DIY kit does not come with a warranty, unlike the fully assembled option which has a 12 month warranty. The indoor air quality monitor features several sensors to help monitor PM0.3, PM1, PM2.5, PM10, CO2, VOC, NOx, temperature, and humidity. The indoor air sensor comes in a UV resistant plastic case that shouldn't turn yellow over time. It also has a 1.3 inch LED display that shows information about the current air quality and it has 11 RGB LEDs that allow for quick knowledge of how the nearby air quality is. The indoor air sensor from Air Gradient has a plan tower PMS 5003, which handles all of the PM readings. It utilizes a Sensair S8 NDIR module for CO2 monitoring. For VOC and NOx readings, it utilizes an SPG41 module, and it has an SHT4X for temperature and humidity readings. Everything is controlled by an ESP C3 Mini microcontroller, and there is a Texas Instruments TPL5010 that acts as an external hardware watchdog to make sure everything keeps running if a fault occurs within the system. The Air Gradient 1 indoor air quality monitor costs $195 USD for the fully assembled and tested model, or you can get the DIY kit for $138 USD. With either option, you will need to provide your own 2 amp 5 volt power supply, but they do include a 2 meter USB C cable. I actually received the DIY kit for the Air Gradient 1, and it was pretty straightforward to put together. No soldering is required, and the kit even includes a T6 Torx screwdriver if you don't already have one, so no tools are required. With the instructions being pretty straightforward, I'm not going to go over putting it together in this video, but pretty much you just have to plug in a few sensors and close up the case. While the Air Gradient 1 indoor air quality monitor is larger than some of the other air monitors on the market, the 11 RGB LEDs and information display on the front is a nice way to quickly see the overall quality of the nearby air which I like. The enclosure was designed to help natural convection to occur, which is supposed to aid in accurate measurements. The enclosure also has the temperature and humidity sensors isolated to help protect it from heat soak caused by internal heat of the air monitor. The optimized enclosure was also designed to prevent air looping in front of sensors, which is supposed to help make PM readings be more accurate. There are a few different mounting options for the Air Gradient 1 indoor air quality monitor. If you want it just on a desk or shelf, you can use the included stand clips. If you want it on a wall, there are four different screw holes that can be used to mount the air monitor. With either mounting option, you'll be able to take advantage of the integrated cable management to help feed power to the onboard USB-C port. The outdoor air quality monitor features several sensors to help monitor PM0.3, PM1, PM2.5, PM10, CO2, VOC, NOx, temperature, and humidity. The outdoor air sensor comes in a UV resistant plastic case that shouldn't turn yellow over time. While the Air Gradient 1 Open Air does not have an official operating temperature range according to support, they did direct me to a forum discussion that mentions that the sensors should be able to reliably operate down to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Since I have not had the sensor during a cold season yet, I don't have a way to easily test this out. So if I see any issues with leaving it outside during the winter, I will make sure to leave an update in the description below. The outdoor air sensor from Air Gradient has a planned tower PMS 5003T, which handles all of the PM readings. It utilizes a Sensair S8 NDIR module for CO2 monitoring. For VOC and NOx readings, it utilizes an SPG41 module. It also takes advantage of the PMS 5003T for temperature and humidity readings. 
Everything is controlled by an ESP C3 Mini microcontroller, and there's a Texas Instruments TPL 5010 that acts as an external hardware watchdog to make sure everything keeps running if a fault occurs within the system. The Air Gradient Open Air Outdoor Air Quality Monitor costs $190 USD for the fully assembled and tested model, or you can get the DIY kit for $125 USD. With either option, you will need to provide your own 2 amp, 5 volt power supply, but they do include a 4 meter USB-C cable. To properly power the outdoor air sensor, you'll either want to have an outlet with an in-use cover on it, or you'll need a weather resistant container to allow for connecting it to an extension cord. The enclosure of the outdoor air quality monitor is made from UV resistant material, which is meant not to turn yellow over time, and it is also weather resistant. The sensor vent was designed to help keep condensation down within the enclosure, while still allowing for accurate measurements. In firmware version 3.0.9, the firmware for both the Air Gradient 1 and the Open Air were combined to making things a bit easier, which I'm glad they did. And in version 3.1.1, over-the-air updates were introduced, allowing for automatic firmware download and installation. Depending on how old this video is by the time you watch it, you may still have to manually upgrade the firmware to get the ability for OTA updates. Luckily, the process is very easy as long as you have a Windows or Mac PC and either Chrome or Microsoft Edge installed. In either browser, navigate to airgradient.com forward slash documentation forward slash firmwares. Then when ready, push and hold the button on the sensor and then plug in the sensor into your computer. After, let go of the button. Then, click on the flash now button next to the firmware version you want to install. Doing so should generate a small pop-up having you select the serial port the sensor is connected to. This should be called something like USB JTAG slash serial debug. Next, click on Install Air Ingredient 1 slash Open Air Version. You'll then be asked if you want to erase the device wiping all data off of it. If you haven't configured the sensor yet, you can go ahead and select Erase Device. Otherwise, I would recommend not, so you don't have to reset it up again. After clicking on Next, you'll be prompted to confirm the version you want to install. Click on Install When Ready. The process should only take a few short moments, and you'll need to make sure the air greening device remains plugged into your computer during this time. It's also recommended to not minimize the browser to allow for it to be as quick as possible. Once the process is complete, you'll be presented with a congratulations pop-up. Finally, unplug the device from power and plug it back in. If you like the idea of the air greening sensors but don't want to have any of your data sent anywhere, version 3.1.1 added the ability to prevent connecting to the Air Gradient servers. Enabling this feature will stop data being sent to the Air Gradient dashboard, as well as your outdoor data being sent to OpenAQ. Onboarding either the indoor or outdoor air sensor is very simple. Plug it into your computer and scan the QR code on the back of the sensor labeled to Wi-Fi. This will connect your phone to the sensor's hotspot. Once connected, you should be redirected to configure the sensor to connect to your wireless network. Take note that the Air 1 and Open Air operate on 2.4 GHz wireless networks only, and do not support 5 GHz wireless networks. This isn't that big of a deal, but something to be aware of. After it's added to your wireless network, you can scan the QR code on the back labeled to Dashboard to finish onboarding the sensor into the Air Gradient Dashboard. The Air Gradient sensors can be added to several different smart home platforms, including HomeKit. For me, I was able to test out having the sensors added to both my Homey Pro and with Home Assistant. Adding it to Homey is really easy. Go to the App Shop, search for Air Gradient, and then install the app. Once the app is installed on your hub, you can go to Add a New Device and select the Air Gradient device type. From here, select the type of sensor you are adding, and then click on Connect. Your Homey hub will then search for any Air Gradient devices of the type you selected. Once discovered, select all the ones you want to add and click on Continue. You'll then be prompted to walk through the new device onboarding process to assign it to a room, give it a name, change its icon, and change its status indicator. Once all set, click on finish and you'll be presented with some common automations people have set up using air gradient sensors. If you have both types like I do, you can simply go through the same process again, but this time for the opposite air sensor type. Once added, you'll be able to see all the sensor readings within Homey, and you'll be able to utilize the data as part of automations. You'll also have historical data stored right on your Homey Hub that will allow for you to go back and look at trends over time. Getting air gradient devices into Home Assistant is super simple, as long as you are running Home Assistant 2024.6 or later. 
and your sensors are on at least firmware version 3.1.1. As long as you meet those two requirements and your network is set up to allow it, any error gradient sensors onboarded onto your network will be auto-discovered by Home Assistant. Once discovered, they will show up under the Devices and Integrations section where you can click on Configure to finish adding them in. If they don't happen to be auto-discovered, you can click on Add Integration to search for Air Gradient, where if you select it, you will be prompted to enter in the IP address of the device you want to add. Once configured within Home Assistant, you'll be able to see all of the sensors from the device, such as carbon dioxide, humidity, nitrogen index, the different PM levels, VOC, and the raw values for a few of the sensors. You'll also be able to control the configuration source and set a few of the baseline settings for some of the sensors, such as CO2, NOx, and VOC. If you have any indoor models added into Home Assistant, you'll also be able to control settings for the built-in display and LED bar. With air gradient sensors added into Home Assistant, you can include sensor data in your home dashboard that could be useful to have as a quick glance. For example, you may want to know what the air quality outside of your home is. With the indoor air sensor, you could set up an automation to trigger an air purifier when any PM levels are elevated. In my automation, I take advantage of a presence sensor in my office so that it will only be triggered when someone is actually in the room. I could just have the air purifier running whenever I'm in the office, but it's kind of loud and having it run when not needed is just a waste of electricity anyways. Another useful automation is different types of alerting when abnormal levels of PM or other gases are detected. For example, I get a text message when my office air sensor detects elevated levels of CO2. This can happen if my office door is shut for extended periods of time or if I'm in a lot of meetings. CO2 concentrations as low as 1,000 parts per million have been correlated with headaches and drowsiness, and I get both of those enough without the help of CO2. If you have a voice assistant set up, you could even have audible notifications triggered when high levels of any monitored gases or particulate matter are detected. Incoming broadcast. It says, high VOC levels detected in the office. This can be very helpful to have when extremely dangerous levels of certain gases are detected and you need to act immediately. I'd love to know what other automation ideas you come up with for air quality sensors, so make sure to let the community know in the comments below. If you decide to share your data with Air Gradient, then you'll be able to access it via the dashboard. From the dashboard, you'll be able to get a quick overview of the air quality being reported by all of the air sensors added, both for indoors and outdoors. This can be very helpful if you have several different air sensors or air sensors at different locations. From the Air Gradient dashboard, you're able to look at historical data, which is nice if you want to see trends. You're also able to set up alarm notifications for when a sensor detects air quality going out of your set range. While I would love to say that I have the means to truly test out the accuracy of these sensors, I don't have the equipment unfortunately. So instead, I'm left with breathing on the sensors to see if CO2 in VOC increases, which they do. I also have other air sensors in my home. And while I use different sensor modules compared to the air gradient sensors, in general all the sensors in the same area saw PM rise and fall around the same time indicating to me that they are actually reading the air. This can be seen when PM levels spiked really high the night of July 4th, as everyone was launching as much freedom as humanly possible into the air. The modules used within both the indoor and outdoor air gradient sensors are well known. I haven't been able to find anything really indicating that they aren't accurate enough for most use cases. Just keep in mind that they are consumer-grade sensors and should not be used for medical purposes or work safety use. Overall, I like what Air Gradient is doing for consumer air sensors. There aren't too many options for outdoor air sensors, and while there is a lot of publicly available data in my area, I found that a lot of times the air quality in my actual backyard is a lot different compared to sensors several miles away. If you want to learn about some pretty cool things you could do with your smart home, make sure to check out this video right here. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating!